Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Crowdsource Commander. Uh, if you watch the channel enough, you know that at the end of every month we do Commander Kingdom, where we have three guests on and we play a commander game, usually just a little more for funsies and whatnot. Well, we're trying out this, Crowdsource Commander, where I build the deck I'm going to be playing on that stream live for y'all, and I just talk through all my choices, chat with y'all about whatever we want to build and throw in the deck. Uh, the plan going forward is that we're going to have Twitter polls where we determine who my commander is going to be in the lead up to this stream each month. For this first one, we just polled everybody who works at Card Kingdom, uh, gave them a few choices from stuff that was in Time Spiral Remastered, and the one that won was, as you can see over there, Slimefoot the Stowaway. Uh, Slimefoot is green-black, obviously, sapperling fungus dude. Uh, he, it, it, I'm going to go with it, it seems safer. <laughs> yeah, uh, Slimefoot, it turns out, is, I think, the 95th or 93rd most popular commander on EDH Rec, uh, as far as just the number of decks built for him, or it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to stick with it. Yeah, uh, it is a cute fungus friend. Uh, before we dive into some of the other bits, we have to determine what exactly our criteria, criteria for building the deck is. Uh... I don't like going in building a commander deck just completely blind. If it's just blue sky, blank paper, that's too hard. Can we get the old artwork on the screen since he has reprinted that way? We can. I don't have it downloaded at the moment, though. Uh, that is the version of Slimefoot that I own personally and the one I'm probably going to be playing with. Uh, we can find the link for that and throw it up in a minute. I just don't have it ready to go with the old frame artwork. Uh, the old frame artwork looks good. It's a little harder to read the name of Slimefoot on, in my opinion. But yeah, it looks nifty. Uh, so, yeah, so, first, what are we going to build? Slimefoot likes making sapperlings, likes uh, using those sapperlings for various means, so our theme is going to be mulch, recycling, use, growing up a bunch of sapperlings, using them to build engines and create resources and do all kinds of things. So we're going to be making tons of tokens and then throwing them away and just making things happen. However, uh... Slimefoot can get a little out of hand if you let him. He can get into somewhat competitive-ish territory. So, uh, I like to make a few rules whenever I build a deck. Just constraints that help me focus what I'm doing. Uh, make it a bit more of a challenge. If you just go for, I'm going to win and throw all the good cards into a deck, building a commander deck isn't as fun for me, just because you just have 70 cards that are pretty much predetermined. Your commander will determine 20 of the other 30 cards just based on the theme. So if you throw a few more constraints, it makes things a little more interesting to me. You have to find weirder cards to build with. So we're going to have three rules for building Slimefoot and three rules for every commander I build on the stream. Uh, <laughs> yes, you can build an explosively strong Slimefoot that can win very quickly and just absolutely wreck the board. We're not going for that, so the rules to stop us from doing that, but still be able to build a decently powerful and fun deck. Rule number one. All of our creatures and tokens have to be fungi or sapperlings, or interact with, make fungi sapperlings, boost fungi sapperlings, have something you can do with them. So no creatures that are just good on their own but don't interact at all with Slimefoot and the Sapperling Fungus theme. Everything must deal with Sapperling's fungus in some way. Uh, rule number two, and the one that is going to make it the hardest for us to win but make us have to be the most creative, uh, no blood artist effects. So no blood artist, no Zulaport cutthroat, nothing where any time a creature or a token of ours dies, the opponents lose life. We can gain life. I'm fine with me gaining a ton of life by throwing away our tokens and whatnot. But Slimefoot decks can pump out a ton of tokens and have a bunch of sack outlets. So, yeah, if you just throw down a Blood Artist and sack 40 tokens really fast, you can certainly win. But that that's no fun. And there's a ton of uh, Slimefoot decks that already do that. So why do that? Uh, the next rule and the last rule is the most boring, the most practical. Uh, there's $500 limit I'm imposing on myself for most of the decks I'm going to build. Uh, based on the price as of the day I'm building it, the prices of cards are obviously going to fluctuate between now and when Commander Kingdom actually happens, but I am building towards a $500 limit now. Uh, 
hopefully I'm going to be building out a bunch of cards I already own, just because I don't want to have to spend $500 every time, but $500 is where we're going to start and aim with. So, we're going to start actually building here, and I'm going to move into a different view so we can kind of get going. Yeah, no guy is cradle. So, hi, I'm down here in the corner now. Uh, how I tend to build decks. Uh, all of our decks that we build for Commander Kingdom, including our guests, we put up on MTG Goldfish, which are these two screens closest to me over here. There's the visual deck view up top and then a list down below. A uh, place I like to go to figure out what I'm going to throw into a deck, other than just flipping through binders that I happen to own and whatnot, uh, is EDH Rec. Why are you mad at my deck name? Jordan, who runs our Card Kingdom account, the deck name's great. Where do you get mold and fungus from when you let food go bad? So the food expired. How do you think Slimefoot ended up on the weather light in the first place? Come on. So yeah, EDH Rec is the other screen way over there. Uh, it just gives you a good overview of a bunch of cards you can throw into your deck. Somebody forgot to clean out the fridge. Very much so, for roughly a thousand or so years, according to the story, I believe. So. Uh, you can see down here, right next, right next to me over there, I'll get the directions down soon, I promise. Right next to me we have a little progress bar. I kind of like to build decks in certain steps. So step one is figure out your mana base. Uh, I generally aim for the, I think, roughly agreed upon amount of 38 lands, and then you adjust up or down just depending on what the deck is doing. Uh, this being a green deck, and sapperlings, and a bunch of tokens, I get the feeling we aren't going to be hurting for mana, so we might shave a couple off that 38. Uh, but for now, let's see what we got. So, we're going to start over here on EDH Rec. Uh, they always put new cards up top for whenever you look up a commander. I'm on the page for Slimefoot the Stowaway right now, just as a commander. It will show you a bunch of the cards that people put in Slimefoot decks. Uh, the few lands that are up here in the new cards section, I'm going to definitely want some of them. Undergrowth Stadium, uh, this whole Battleborn cycle of lands, they aren't all in Battleborn, but the first set of them appeared in Battleborn, where they enter tapped unless you have two or more opponents, are some of the best commander lands they have ever printed. I like throwing them into any multicolored decks I ever have, so definitely an Undergrowth Stadium is going in there. Oh yes, very much so, Card Kingdom. Uh, the Pathway, I'm definitely down with the dual colored Pathways, that's fine. Uh, some of the creatures we'll get to in a minute. Uh, Woodland Chasm, unless we end up really wanting snow, I'm probably not going to bother. Uh, like, the searchability is nice, but we're going to have plenty of options for lands we can search up, so I'm not going to start out throwing snow lands in just because. Uh, so, we jump down to lands and we see some of the most popular lands that are in Slimefoot. So, uh, Golgari Rot Farm. I am not the biggest fan of the bounce lands unless you have a reason for it, like you are a landfall deck, uh, you have lands with enter the battlefield abilities that you want to be replaying a lot. So for now, I'm going to leave that out. If we end up with some of those effects in our deck, we might throw it back in. Uh, Command Tower. Command Tower I don't think is the most necessary in two color decks, but we'll throw it in for now. This one might end up getting shaved. Three or more color decks, Command Tower is obviously bonkers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> That's all I got. Oh dear, you can see like my thing three times, can't you? Oh well, I'll fix, I'll fix the mouse stuff later. That'll be next stream. Uh, Jungle Hollow. Uh, the life gain tap land, don't really like them unless you are specifically life gain deck, have a bunch of triggers that trigger off of life gain, so for now, skipping it. Evolving Wilds will throw in. Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, they, they do exactly what they need to do. They are fine. Uh, Woodland Cemetery, absolutely. Don't like the Guild Gate unless we have a gate theme, which we definitely aren't going to in this deck, so yeah, no reason. Uh, Lanor Wastes? We could. I'll throw it in for now. That one might end up getting shaved. The pain lands are fine. They definitely do what you need them to do, but it just kind of depends. They're kind of on the lower end of dual lands for me. What else do we got here? Overgrown Tomb? Absolutely sure. Temple? I like Temple in these kind of decks. Non-blue decks, anything they can do to get extra scries, draws, any of that kind of effect, I'm down with. So Temple of Malady? Sure. Uh, Foul Orchard just straight up under the battlefield tap? Nope. Tainted Wood, 
I don't know about Tainted Wood in this deck. I don't think we're really going to end up needing it. Blooming Marsh, just to jump down here. Uh, the Fastlands, I'm not the biggest fan of in EDH. They're much better in decks where you can have four of them. I'm also not sure Slimefoot we're going to be building is the most aggro, must-have, untapped lands the first two turns sort of deck anyway. So Blooming Marsh going to skip. Blighted Woodland, on the other hand, is one of my favorite utility lands and ways to search out lands. That's definitely going in. Uh, Twilight Myers, uh, maybe? Yeah, I don't know about Twilight Mire. The filter lands are good. They aren't fantastic to me. And I'm not sure how many non-basics I'm going to be wanting in this deck, so we'll see on Twilight Mire. Uh, Myriad Landscape, I kind of like Blighted Woodland better in this slot just because it doesn't enter tapped. Filter lands do suck up a little bit of budget. Twilight Mire certainly isn't the worst for that. You can see at Card Kingdom it's seven bucks right there, so not the worst, but yeah, we can spend that money elsewhere if we really need to. Uh, the Peatland. Peatland I'll definitely do. Like, it does also suck up some budget, but again, it's another way to draw a card. I'll take it every time. Uh, Path of Ancestry. Commander's Color Identity. Uh, shares creature type with our Commander Scry one, so since we're going to be having a bunch of funguses, fungi, yes, fungi in our deck, I think this is worth it here. Uh, usually only tribal decks, this is going to be a semi-tribal deck, so sure, Path of Ancestry, why not? Uh, Vivid Grove, I don't really think I need. If we were a more than two color deck, the groves and these kind of lands are fine. Uh, Jund, Panor Jund Panorama, same kind of deal. Oh, good lord, Aragorn. Just, just oh, oh good lord. Uh, Warped Landscape, I don't think I care about. Catacombs is a ton of our budget. I'll throw it in for now, but that might end up just getting cut purely for money reasons. Uh, the Passage and Vista are also going in there. Vista might also get cut. Fabled Passage is just good. I like Fabled Passage. That one's staying in there. Uh, Bayou is more than our entire budget by itself. Uh, 650 bucks right now at Card Kingdom. Even if we find the lowest price somewhere else, it's still 450 bucks. So, no, we're not doing that. Uh, same for Exotic Orchard. I don't like, we're a two-color deck. We aren't hurting that much for being able to find our colors. We'll be fine. All right, so that takes care of our colored lands, or just straight-up mana-producing lands. I'm going to add them into our deck here. Update our preview. Save, and then I have to update a couple of other windows just to get that show up here. All right, so there is what we have so far for our deck. Not awful. Where are we looking at money-wise? $136 just in our lands. We have 17 lands, which includes one swamp and one forest. So not a bad start. Are we base black or green? I get the feeling we're going to end up being green. I haven't gotten that far yet, Dark Spire Dragon. Uh, all I know is, as you can see from the rules, no Blood Artist effect, which automatically cuts us down on black a lot, since that's normally the sort of thing this deck is going to want, and we're going to be a little more creative than that. Uh, the problem is, I do know one kind of card I'm going to want in this deck is going to be Grave Pack Dictate of Erebro style stuff, which are heavy black cards. I don't know how many double or triple green pip cards I'm going to end up with, so... Yeah, Mana Rocks is next. For now, we need to finish out lands with utility lands. Uh, stuff that does other stuff. Uh, Grim Backwoods, what do you do? Sacrifice a creature, draw a card? That's not awful in our deck, actually. Uh, yeah, you know what? I think we can manage that. So we'll throw in one Grim Backwoods, Juke Bog for sure. The Juke Bog goes in any deck I can that has black that I will ever build. Uh, Reliquary Tower, I think we're going to want in this deck. I think we are going to end up drawing more cards than not. Uh, Urborg is a maybe. It depends on how heavy black we're going. I'll throw it in for now, but it might get cut if we don't really need all of those lands. 
Temple of the False God, I am very meh on, so I think I'm skipping it for now. Like, we're going to get lands. We're going to be able to produce enough mana. I don't think Temple is really necessary here. Karn's Bastion, I think I'm going to want, just because a lot of the fungus creatures end up with spore counters. You need three spore counters to, sac uh, to take off the creature to make Sapperling. So Proliferate is going to be a thing. Orin Reef the Vastwood, we can also throw in. We're going to be playing plenty of green creatures, and we can just make them slightly bigger. It's not bad. Uh, Tranquil Ticket, I like me my cycling lands. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Nightbot. Hello, Nightbot. Uh, Mortuary Mire, Entrance Battlefield tab. When it enters the battlefield, you may put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. Sure. That is low enough cost for, or low enough opportunity cost for us. Uh, Phyrexian Tower, we'll see. I'll certainly have the creatures to use it. I'm not sure we super need it. Uh, same thing for Garenbrig. Garenbrig is good. Uh, you know what? I think I actually do want Garenbrig. I know a couple of the cards I'm going to want to throw into this deck. I think Garenbrig will be helpful. Uh, Hissing Quagmire, I like Manlands. Hissing Quagmire is one of the better defensive ones. Uh, so, sure, why not? Uh, which is Cottage... Let me put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. We already have Mortuary Mire that does that without the uh, three or more Swamps Clause, so I think that will do for that one. Uh, Baron Moor and Tranquil Ticket are going in. I just like Cycling Lands. They are good. We're also likely in this deck going to have ways to buy back lands out of our graveyard, so the Cycling Lands go way up whenever you can do that. Uh, Lockthwain. So I get the feeling... If things go according to plan <laughs> with our games, we shouldn't really be needing to draw from zero cards in our hand. We're going to have ways to sacrifice our creatures and draw cards using that. Uh, Lockthwain is there kind of as a safety valve. It doesn't really hurt us to put in. Uh, we're probably going to have Swamp, so it will enter untapped. But yeah, I don't know that it is going to be the most thing we need. Uh, Cabal Coffers, really good card. I don't know where that heavy black, we don't need it. It's also 90 bucks, which also leads us to uh, the aforementioned Gaia's Cradle that Aragorn brought up. Uh, Aragorn? Aragorn, not Aragorn. Way to uh, skirt copyright infringement there. Anyway, Gaia's Cradle, uh, super good. It's a thousand bucks. Uh, Michael US, that is definitely a card that is going to end up going into the deck. All right, so. We have added some more cards to our deck. Let me clean up this list a little bit. Uh, where are we at? Peatland, Path, Ancestry, we wanted. Burning Catacombs, Way of Passage, Grim. There we go. So these are the extra cards that we just added. Yes. Going to throw these into the list real quick and see where that puts us. Update all of my windows. All right, there is that. Let's update the visual view real quick. All right, so as far as lands go, what are we looking at? We're at 29 lands, which includes one swamp and one forest. And we are, where for money are we? Where does it say? $175. Not bad, because that includes Urborg. Yeah, that's not bad. We still got plenty of money to play around with. Moving on, we go to a very uh, important bit of any EDH deck, the Mana Rocks. Uh, we're also going to be using cards, obviously, that don't necessarily appear on EDH Rec. I just like going through EDH Rec, and then we can look at the list later and figure out if it's missing anything egregious. EDH Rec just gives you a very good base from which to start. Uh, mana Artifacts. Soul Ring. Yep. Uh, Golgari Signet, absolutely. The Talisman I, is good. I'm not sure how hurting for our we are going to be for Mana Rocks. So this one is kind of in the middle tier if we end up really needing more. Uh, Arcane Signet we can definitely throw in there for sure. Uh, the Locket and the Clue Stone I dislike. <laughs> I am not going to throw those in. However, dorks are better than rocks, which is why I'm not throwing in a ton of these. The only other rock I think I'm going to throw in, other than these three that we already have, is Thought Vessel. 
Uh, let me pull that up somewhere. I don't really actually have a good spot to pull that up. So we'll just real quick. Thought Vessel. If y'all don't know what Thought Vessel does, I can just do this, can't I? Slash card. Thought Vessel. Oh, come on. There we go. So, Thought Vessel. Uh, it's another two mana rock. It's only colorless that it taps for, but it's another reliquary tower. You have no maximum hand size. So, yes, definitely like me a Thought Vessel in this kind of deck. Let's get that over into our list. Add our few rocks that we have so far. Save, update all of our windows just so we keep up with where we're at. And I don't think any of those were too expensive. Nope, 183, not bad. We are at four artifacts, 29 lands. Uh, for now, I'm just going to fill out those lands. Chat, uh, can you go back to the invasion series? If so, sapling some symbiosis, another sorcery, mid-range price though. Uh, price for things that aren't like Gaia's Cradle or Bayou that just absolutely blow us out on price. Price is one of the last things I'm going to look at. If we end up building everything and we end up over 500, that's when we'll start maybe trimming for price. Uh, for now, if a card's good, it's going to go on the list. As far as lands go, I'm going to throw in another few lands. I do need to look at the double, uh, the modal cards from wherever that was. There's some, in, not in Kaldheim. The tet that was right before Kaldheim, good lord. Uh, the other Zendikar. Zendikar, again. <laughs> the modal double face card lands that had the spells on the other side, spells and creatures. Some of those are probably going to end up in here. We will figure that out shortly. Uh, where is my EDH rack? There it is. All right, so. Oh, I forgot, yeah. We are done with ramp. We're not quite done with ramp. We got rocks down. Now we have to actually hit ramp. What ramp do I want? Let's look through some of the high synergy cards and whatnot that I list on EDH rec and figure out what counts as ramp. I'm gonna clear out my clipboard here just so I have room for some other bits. Whatever that manadork fungus is. Oh yeah, the modal double face card fungus. Uh, so this is gonna get a little shaky as far as the progress bar goes. I'm gonna end up throwing some theme cards in there for now as well because they're just going to fit. But we can figure out what we want as far as ramp first. Uh, return target permanent, Utopia, the Mike Loth. Not a lot of the high synergy cards are technically ramp. And I do want to kind of keep it in order if I can. Uh, we could throw an Ashnod's Altar in. I will definitely call that some amount of ramp. Uh, maybe. I'll throw it on the list for now. I'm not sure we're going to super end up using it. If we don't, we'll cut it, but it's good. It'll stay in there. Uh, Cultivate for now we'll throw on. I think we can do a little better than Cultivate, but we'll find out. I mean, Cultivate is also just good, so it's not like it's terrible if it ends up in there. Uh, creatures. Where is that flip creature? Oh, hi, Blood Artist. No Blood Artist in this deck, however, though. Uh, you're definitely going to end up going in there, but later. Where are my rampy creatures? Uh, Sakura Tribe Elder? Good ramp creature. Not a fungus. Doesn't interact with sapperlings at all. None of that. Evolution Sage is the sort of card I would like to throw in there, but again, doesn't quite work. Not with the theme. We might not have a lot of dorks if I stick to my, uh... Would tutors fall under the utility column for build, or are you just working through card draw? Uh, tutors would end up working through the utility column if we really end up needing them, yes. Uh, the problem I am realizing, Darkspire Dragon, with dorks being better than rocks, is a lot of the dorks don't really fit with rule number one over here, 
creatures and tokens must be fungus sapperlings or interact with fungus and sapperlings. So none of the elves really work for that. Uh, yeah, wow. What is that one modal double face card that I'm thinking of that I can't think of? Instance? I don't think the instants are going to be a lot of... Oh, Death Sprout. Death Sprout technically counts as ramp. Utopia Mycon. Thank you. But yeah, Death Sprout counts as ramp. Also removal. It's great. Utopia Mycon. Uh, yeah, we can do Utopia Mycon. That'll definitely go in there. There was another one of the modal double-faced cards that uh, the other side was a Mana Dork Fungus. It's not that good of a card, <laughs> but it does things we need, so it might end up going in there. Uh, Alright, what do we want out of the sorceries for ramp? I think we want... We're going to want a Kadama's Reach style effect. Grow from the ashes I like. It might end up getting cut. Uh, the Sky Shroud claim is good. It's definitely better than explosive vegetation. I think we go with that. More of a bloom was not ramp. Uh, no. Nature's Lore is a maybe. It's kind of expensive for what it does, but it's very good. Uh, oh, that's fun. That's funny. Harvest Season's a good one. So yeah, we are going to want some amount of basic lands here. Da -da -da. Migration Path. Uh, no, we already have uh, Growth from the Ashes, which kind of fills that spot for me. Alright, so we have 7 bits of ramp, plus uh, Utopia Micon. Puts us up to 8, which isn't awful. Let's add those in real quick. Alright, update all my screens. Interface for this is a little clunky. It turns out trying to find a good visual uh, deck spoiler that works well for commander decks on a stream is a little tricky because they take up lots of room. Alright, so we're at 197 so we're at 200 bucks, but we're through pretty much all of our lands and ramp that matters. We might still throw in a couple of more things, but this feels fine. Uh, as far as snow basics, I don't think so. I don't, I don't, I can't think of any of the snow cards off the top of my head that are screaming out to me must be in this deck. Yeah, so ramp being done, we now move on to some of the more we're going to get to the fun stuff soon, I promise. But now we're working on draw and removal. Death Spore Thalid. Beginning of your upkeep, put a Spore counter on Death Spore Thalid. Remove three. Sacrifice target creature gets minus one, minus one till end of turn. That'll definitely go under removal. I think that counts. All right. Let's get back to the screen that I can see. There we go. All right. So, removal. We're going to go up to our high synergy cards first. Because look at that, Death Spore Thalid, number one with a bullet. Death Spore Thalid definitely goes in there. I am going to count Fungal Plots as a draw engine. Because in our deck, it most certainly is. Sacrifice two Thapperlings, you gain two life and draw a card. Absolutely exactly what we're going for. 
But to but to but what else is good card draw or removal here? Bungle rebirth, not quite. There's the utopia icon that I missed earlier. Card draw sort of stuff. Uh, Moldervine Reclamation we can definitely add into the deck. Like, if we get two or three of these kind of engines where whenever a creature we control dies and sacrificing creature draws cards, um, this deck gets very silly very fast. Which is part of the reason I don't want to be throwing Zulaport Archer, or Zulaport Cutthroat, Poison Tip Archer, Blood Artist style cards in there because they just get out of hand real fast and they're no real fun for your opponents or for you, in my opinion. Like, if all you're after is winning, absolutely throw those cards in. If you are going up in a competitive meta or a competitive pod, put all of those cards in, you'll need them. If we aren't, eh, it's fine. Uh, what do we got? Nomada Grove Guardian and Fecundity. We'll get there. I'm just kind of going through... Oh, Skull Clamp is one of the best draw spells we are going to have in our deck. For sure. Uh, creatures, what do we got? Anything that actually counts as draw or removal. There's the Grove Guardian. Okay, yeah. You, you aren't draw or removal, but Namada is definitely going to go in there at some point. What else do we got? Uh, Smothering Abomination. I see what they're doing there. Not going to throw it in because it is not in itself. Sapperling, Fungus, or actually affecting those things. Thelon isn't whenever a player sacrifices another creature. Species Specialist. That's interesting. I don't think it quite fits correctly. Uh, where is any... There's a few cards that I had in my head that I just cannot think of right now. It's another one of those effects we can't use. Uh, Golgari Charm I'm going to throw in here as removal. Uh, it also, like, the minus one, minus one until end of turn for all creatures seems awful. Spoiler alert, we're going to have a bunch of effects that pump up all of our things, so hopefully that doesn't kill us. It also, if somebody else is on a token plan, can help us out. Uh, oops, didn't actually mean to click on it like that. Go back. Uh, but Golgari Charm, the Regenerate All Creatures, uh, is going to be important for us. Winding Constrictor, uh, is not a Fungus or a Sapperling, so sadly we aren't going to be able to use it. Uh, Village Rights is card draw... Uh, but it's a one-off. We can do better than that. Uh, Fungal Infection's funny. It does create a sapperling for us. I'll throw it in for now, but the fact that it's only minus one, minus one is... Meh. <laughs> Obviously. It's not... It's not great. What else do we have here for... Tainted Strike. Uh, Infect. Meh. Meh. Uh, cards like Abrupt Decay and uh, Assassin's Trophy. Yeah, we'll throw them in for now. They're just so boring. Murder, we can do better than. Murder is good at what it does, but come on. Wing Grace's Judgment's the kind of place I want to be for my removal. Let's get mean about things. Uh, destroy target artifact. Targets plus one plus one gains Death Touch. That's not awful. Stone to stat or status and statue. We can throw that in for now. Uh, Hagger Mauling is definitely a card I like for these modal double face cards. Uh, straight up just destroy something are good. I want to see if we can get a little more inventive with our ways of killing things. Casualties of War is a card I'm going to throw into every green-black deck I can just because it is so demoralizing when it actually goes off. 
Uh, primal growth. What do you do? Sacrifice creature. Oh, it's another uh, one of those. Coat of arms is super tribal friendly. Indeed, it is. Uh, death mutation is definitely going to be in our. Oh wait, it's like what eight mana though. Ugh, gross. You know what? I'll throw it in for now. We'll see if it ends up uh, becoming a thing. That is why we have cards like Ashnod's Altar in our deck, though. Just block three things with three saplings, sack them, and then death. Uh, it's a sorcery, so it doesn't really work that way, does it? Oh well, we'll figure it out. Uh, Gaze of Granite, no. Bone Splinters is definitely an option. We're going to have plenty of creatures to uh, work with. However, I think Spark Harvest is better for that slot. Uh, normally, I don't think Bone Splinters is good enough to run on its own. Uh, Spark Harvest being able to take out Planeswalkers as well, sure, I'll do it. Uh, do we want a ton of Wraths is a question. So we can throw in Damnation Toxic Deluge style effects, but I think having one or two of those is going to be handy. Don't think we want a ton. Uh, victimize is fun. I'm not trying sure counting that as card draw or removal right now. Uh, where was fecundity? Enchantments. We're gonna have a ton that will work for card draw for us. Uh, Cryptolithrite is also fun. Just turn everything of ours into mana dorks. Throw that in there, that'll go back under the ramp part. Uh, whenever a non-token creature we control dies, so that's soon, not quite yet for that. Here we go. Uh, Dictate of Erebos, I definitely want in there. Whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play. That's interesting. I actually like that a lot for fecundity. Good call, Wanganator. Uh, yeah. Death Reap Ritual we could do for card draw. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, Keen Sense is not for this deck. We're going to have enough things that we're going to be able to push some amount of damage through probably, but pushing it through on a specific creature might not be what we are good at. Uh, Grave Pact is 30 bucks. We already have the Dictate in there, which is 16. I don't want to be too mean about all of this, if I can help it. So I think one of those effects is fine. Grave Pact, with a bunch of sapperling out, sack outlet sort of stuff, is going to get mean real fast. Uh, uh, Vampiric Rites is fine. Yeah, we can throw that in there, why not? For now. I don't know if it ends up making the ultimate cut. Phyresis, no. Winding Wilderness Reclamation, cheesy. <laughs> just in my opinion. It's not bad or anything, it's just easy mode. Do we want any Planeswalkers? That's an interesting question. Uh, Dreadhorde General, maybe. Yeah, I think we do want Dreadhorde General. Even though you are expensive. Oh, good lord. Golgari Queen, we can gain life and draw cards pretty easily. Uh, whenever a creature controls, this might actually also be... Rascal Golgari Queen might end up being one of our only real win cons other than just swinging with 50 tokens. So I like throwing that in there. And that will be our draw and removal. And after this, we go on to one of the more fun parts of deck building, which is actually throwing in all of the cards that build on our theme. First off, let's throw all of these into the deck and see where we're at, both numbers-wise, cost-wise, and everything else. Alright, so we're officially going past where we can really show off everything easily in one screen. Unless I start resizing stuff a bit. You're getting the idea, though. So, for now, where are we at? 
we are at... So not just tell me how many cards are in the deck. 63 cards total so far. I still do have to add in some amount of basic lands. I should do that really fast. We're at $294, so we're looking good on price. Uh, what are we at? We're at 29 lands, 30 if we count one of the modal double face cards we have already. So we're just going to up the land counts real quick for the basics to four and four from one and one. Which will put us... I don't think the visual view changes at all when I do that. But we're now at 69 cards total. I'll let somebody in chat say anything about that. Uh, so we have 31 more cards to play around with, assuming none of this gets cut, which it very easily can. And now we get to go to the fun part, which is all of our actual theme stuff. So this is where we get to throw in all of our sapling generators and everything like that. Spore Mound, whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token. Here's the thing. Uh, Spore Mound is good. We have to be able to get it out pretty early and play a ton of lands to get a lot of use out of it. It'll go in for now. It's one I am not completely sold on. I think it's good, but how many tokens do you need to get out of a 5-mana creature before it's super worth it. It is a 3-3 on its own. It's not like it's awful. Uh, Verdant Force, I mean, we could use some big beef. We're going to have a ton of small little creatures, but having at least one big huge threat isn't bad. And it also just slowly pumps out more and more uh, Sapperlings Force as we go. Fungal Plots definitely goes in there. Holy Lord, Fungal Plots is good for us. Necrogenesis, what do you do again? Exile, target creature card from a graveyard. Oh, that is our uh, grave control, graveyard control, so absolutely we can throw that in there. Uh, Tender Shoot Dryad is going to be one of our big win conditions. It itself is not a fungus or a sapperling, but it does call out sapperlings very specifically in its text, so it counts for our theme. Uh, it spits out a sapperling at the beginning of each upkeep, not just each of our upkeeps, and then it pumps up all of our sapperlings as well once we have the city's blessing. This deck is going to be pretty easy to get to 10 permanents being on the battlefield, just because we are pumping out so many tokens pretty fast. So uh, Tender Shoot Dryad is going to be pretty great. Uh, Thelon is definitely going to go in the deck. Thelon was actually one of the other options for a commander for this month, uh, but it didn't quite win out. Uh, sapling Migration, absolutely. Uh, if Fungal Rebirth, I think we can definitely do... Yeah. Yeah, we can do Fungal Rebirth. I like my regrowth effects and things that also regrowth and give me more Sapperlings is always good. Utopia Micon's already in there. Uh, Spore Sour Thalid definitely goes in. It's going to work with a bunch of our other Thalids. <laughs> to make us sapperlings a lot faster. Uh, because we're putting spore counters on each fungus we control. A bunch of our funguses are going to want uh, those spore counters. Uh, do we want my cloth? Devour two at the beginning of the upkeep, create one green sapperling for yes, we're gonna want my cloth. Uh, Thelonite Hermit, all sapperlings get plus one plus one. Definitely goes in our deck. Sporloth Ancient. Uh, put a spore counter on Sporloth Ancient. Creatures you control have removed two uh, spore counters from this creature, create a 1 1 token. So Sporloth Ancient by itself is fine. It ups the clock. Most of the uh, Thalids and Fungus that where you remove spore counters to make a Sapperling require you remove three spore counters. Sporloth Ancient makes the, it only requires two. Uh, Sporloth Ancient plus Spore Sower Thalid is kind of the combo we want, just because then everything is pumping out a ton of those real fast uh, for the individual cards. <laughs> yeah, uh, we happen to be partnered with both EDH Rec and MTG Goldfish, as well as a couple of other websites you can use to build cards on. I think we have uh, stuff with Architect and Moxfield and at least one or two others. Uh, 
which makes it very easy if you want to buy cards from Card Kingdom. This little crown underneath the cards here uh, will show you how much it is to buy at Card Kingdom. And if you click on that, it'll take you to the Card Kingdom page. It'll show you how many we have in stock. Yeah, we do like making it easy. Spore Law the Ancient, we already got on there, yes. All right, top cards. We have all of these sort of effects that we cannot use with the Zula Port Cutthroat and the Poison Tip Archer again. Uh, second Harvest. For each token you control, create a token that's a copy of that permanent. It's a good card. It does things we want. It is an instant speed card. I am going to pass on it for now because it is a one shot. We can buy it back with some of our regrowthy sort of effects, but I would rather have things that sit on the battlefield like enchantments that do this sort of effect over time. Uh, Sprout Swarm we can definitely do. It is... So Sprout Swarm has the distinction. Slight uh, story time divergent here. So we held a bunch of popper tournaments at Card Kingdom when we could, called the Rags to Riches tournaments. Once we can do big tournaments again, we will do that again. We were one of the first places that was doing paper popper tournaments, and we had one player, Travis uh, Orbla, I think I'm saying his last name right, uh, who built these uh, blue-black control decks that were monstrosities. They were mostly what you would expect out of blue-black control, except that they were, some of them, during a certain portion of Popper, he'd end up with like 64 cards in the decks just because one, they all served a purpose. They were mystical teachings decks, so they were a bunch of tutor targets in there and you needed enough of the main cards of the deck that you couldn't really shave too, many else, too much else out of it, but he had a bunch of specific tutor targets that he wanted to get with mystical teachings. So he ended up with like 64 card decks his main win con in those decks was Sprout Swarm. He would splash green, and he would just eventually, over 20 turns, just cast Sprout Swarm every turn and eventually kill you. It was amazing. As a judge, I hated it because he went to time almost every round. But I'm going to throw Sprout Swarm in this uh, deck, not just because it's a good card in this deck, but as uh, Dravzorbla, I remember you. I miss your face. We're going to throw that in there just as a tribute. Moving on. Uh, Thal Germinator at the beginning of your upstep. Put spore counters again. Remove three, three spore counters. Create a 1 1 green sapperling. Uh, that is your basic Thalid uh, fungus spore counter thing. But then sacrifice the sapperling. Target creature gets plus 1 plus 1 till end of turn. That's going to be very useful for us. Uh, what do we got here? Psychotrope Thalid is another normal Thalid. Those first two blocks of text on most Thalids are going to be the same thing. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a spore counter on it. Remove three spore counters. Make one one Sapperling. This one has one in Sacrifice of Sapperling. Draw a card. Absolutely, we want that. Uh, spore Crown Thalid. Each other creature you control that's a fungus or a Sapperling gets plus one plus one. Yes, most definitely. Uh, spore Swarm. We can do better. Like, it's an instant one-shot, four mana, you get three sapperlings, which is fine and good. We want things that do that over more turns. Like, more than just once, if we can. Uh, Savage Thalid, normal Thalid stuff. Sacrifice a sapperling, regenerate target fungus. That's going to be good. All of our Thalids and things that are making all of these sapperlings are funguses. So this just helps make our sapperlings protect those cards. Bastion of Remembrance is another one of those effects that we do not want for this particular deck. Other creatures we can throw in here. Bite a Spore Thalid, normal stuff, target creature gains haste until end of turn. Not bad. Uh, for one and a green, maybe? Thing is, what creatures do are we getting that we really want haste for? None of the big stuff we have so far is really tap to activate. Like, a bunch of our stuff has been pay one or sacrifice a creature and do stuff. So they don't need haste for that. We only have, like, one 7-7 seven seven so far in the deck. Our next biggest creature, I think, right now is the Savage Thalid at a 5-2. I don't think haste is really, like, the best thing for us. And we don't have too much room left in the deck, so I might skip it for now. 
Uh, the Soothsayer to sacrifice creature draw a card. We have a lot of those effects already. And if I'm going to be playing Thalids, I want to make room for things that actually make us creatures. Uh, Thalid Shell Dweller is just the most basic version of a Thalid other than Thalid down here right next to it. Uh, both of them just have the basic Thalid text. Uh, like Thalid Soothsayer would definitely go in the deck if it also had that Thalid text. I feel like I'm speaking with a lisp right now because of saying Thalid. 50 times, that's only going to get worse as we go on. Uh, Vertiloth the Ancient, big kicker. Uh, Snapperling creatures and other tree folk creatures we control get plus one, plus one. Uh, we can spend a bunch of mana to put a bunch of Snapperlings into play. Uh, that works very well with Ashnod's Altar. We can basically turn every one Thalid that we sacrifice to it into two Thalids. So, yeah, I'm down for that. Uh, Plunder isn't going to work, Vampire isn't going to work, Viscera Seer isn't going to work, Constrictor, you are so good, but again, you are a snake, do not call out Thalids or Sapperlings, so no. Same for all of these kind of cards, there we go, Yavamaya Shepherd is a little bit basic. Yeah, like, I don't know, man, <laughs> we might throw that in there if we really need another card, but... A lot of these, like M21 and Dominaria Thalids, are missing, or the Sapperling Makers are missing that Thalid text that makes them real good. Uh, Thalid Omnivore we're going to throw in there just because it can become a huge threat. It is a sacrifice outlet if we end up needing that, and it's also gaining us life, so it checks enough boxes that even with the normal Thalid text, it's fine. Thalid Devourer is an old school card that I can barely read. What do you say? During your upkeep, put a spore counter on it, remove three spore counters from it, put a green sapperling, sacrifice a sapperling to give this plus one plus two until end of turn, so you're a semi-worse Thalid Omnivore. Yeah, we can skip it for now. Uh, hey, there's Namara. You can throw in Namara. Namara is good. Uh, whenever... Spore Web Weaver is dealt damage, you gain one life and create a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token. You have Reach and Hexproof from Blue, which could be useful. I don't know what our other guests are going to be playing yet. Uh, the guests we are, might have already announced on Twitter, I think at this point, and also I will be telling you who they are at the end of the stream, so if you're wondering who I'm playing at the end of this month, stick around, we'll get there. Uh... You are maybe. I'm going to throw you in now, but you might end up getting cut. You just barely fit our theme because you are have to call out the 1-1 green sapperlings. Uh, Tuckatong Thalid, when it dies, create a 1-1. Just for one mana, we can do slightly better than that. Uh, Thelon of Havenwood. Here's the guy. Each fungus creature gets plus one plus one for each spore counter on it. Absolutely love that. And then for green, green, or is that green, black? That might be green, black. Anyway, exile a fungus card from a graveyard, put a spore counter on each fungus on the battlefield. You know what? It's weird. It fits our theme. We're going to go for it. Uh, the draw priestess whenever a creature. Nope, not a thalid. Not a thalid. Uh, Elvish. A lot of these things would be real good, but they don't quite fit our rules. Unfortunate. Plant creature token for Grismold here is sadly not quite correct. We have Fertilid. Ah, Fertilid would, would be great for a ramp spell, but it's an elemental, it's not a fungus. Does not work. Rot Chambler is fungus. Whenever another creature we control dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Rot Chambler. Yeah, we can make that work for us. I think we're running out of a bunch of our Thalidy things. All right, so what else is on theme? We're getting close to 100 already. We can go over 100 because the last step we do before we're done is edit down to the final 100. So what else do we got? Scatter the seeds, convoke, create 1-1... One, one. Great, three sapperlings, but at one time we already have Sprout Swarm, which does the same thing for us multiple turns. 
Uh, the rebirth, frozen grip. No, no. We're the next thing we're gonna do after we finish getting all of our uh, actual theme cards down, which I should probably highlight. That's what we're doing right now. We're building the theme. Uh, is going to be utility cards, which is where things like Heroic Intervention might go and some of these other cards, like Return to Nature, that sort of thing. But for now, we're not quite there. Sprout, put a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token into play. Here's the thing, like, it's an 8% of the decks on EDA Trek for this, for uh, Slimefoot. Unless you're playing super budget, don't put Sprout into your Slimefoot deck. Like, it, it fits the theme, it does everything, but this is Commander. You can do, we can do bigger, more fun things here. It's just, just, just dream a little. I think we're slowly going to be running out of some of our theme stuff here. What do we got? Symbiosis anytime you can play an instance. So this is another essentially double our number of sapperlings card. It's fine. X is the greatest power among creatures we control. Hmm. Hmm. More bloom? Like, eh, that's fine. Did I already throw you in the deck? For some reason I thought I already threw you in the deck. Don't think I did. Good. We don't want, like, more bloom is fine. Death mutation we already threw in. For each card in our hand, put a sapperling into play. All of these things that are one-shots, I'm just very wary of for some reason. I don't think they're enough. Fertile Imagination, what do you do? Target opponent reveals his or her hand for each type. Interesting. I'm not sure it goes in the deck, but it's interesting. Yeah, I think that might do it for our... Oh, wait. Enchantments. Enchantments are going to be important. Slimefoot is your all-time favorite commander? Good. I'm glad. Slimefoot is a hoot and a holler, and a bunch of people seem to like it. Uh, I don't know if you just joined us or not, Bizarro Navarro. Uh, Slimefoot is normally a pretty... I wouldn't say an easy build. There's a lot of room in the margins for a lot of stuff. We're making it a lot harder with rule number two here. No blood artist effects, so we have to win without just sacrificing all of our stuff. Uh, the other big thing that has been limiting us is, uh, the first rule here is all of our creatures and tokens have to be fungus, sapperlings, or related to fungus or sapperlings. So, we're getting an interesting version of this deck here. Whenever a... do we already have Golgari Germination? Because if we don't, we should. Yes. Golgari Germination for sure. I'm glad you like those rules. Like, yeah. I just wanted to get out of the normal lanes that you see people build Slimefoot in. And obviously, we could go real weird with Slimefoot if we wanted to and not do sa sapperlings or fungus at all. But come on. Have play into the theme a little bit. <laughs> uh, what do we got? Enchant creature plus three plus three. Beginning of each upkeep, create a 1 1 green sapperling creature token. That's interesting. It's like Verdant Force. It does fit into our theme. It is an enchantment aura, which I am wary of, like, you know, 90% of players for one reason or another. You're a maybe. I am not sure about you. Uh, Death Reap Ritual, I think we already had. Kundity, we already had. They went in when we were doing our card draw stuff. Uh, exile two cards from a single graveyard. Night Soil, did I already throw you in there? Because if I didn't, you should definitely be in there. Oh, well, they're creature cards. You have to exile two creature cards from a single graveyard. That makes it somewhat worse. I know I already had some amounts of grave hate in here. What was it again? I think it was some of the creatures did stuff. So, Night Soil is a maybe for now. 
$500 limit per card. Uh, even if we went with those rules, uh, BME Mike, we've already found some cards we would like to throw in here that we can't, namely Guy's Cradle and Bayou. <laughs> Uh, so no no green black dual land for us because they're above five hundred bucks for a single one at near mint. Oh yeah, I should also point out with that five hundred dollar limit, uh, this is I'm going off the prices of the cards at near mint. I might not end up playing near mint cards because I like saving money. I also am not necessarily one of those people that feels a need to foil out all of my commander decks or anything like that. Uh, I got into Magic like in a real way, playing Legacy. Good lord, how long ago was that? Seven years ago at this point? Eight years ago? Uh, at the time, I did not have a terribly high paying job or anything like that. Money was not exactly no object to me when I was buying cards. So getting into Legacy, I got very used to finding the cheapest, most beat up versions of cards that I could still manage to fit into sleeves. And yeah, so, you know, uh, I am not, I just grew into the kind of magic player where foils aren't really what I'm after. <laughs> as long as I can play the cards and have fun, that's all I really care about. People who do like altars and foils, absolutely go for it. I do, like, if that does it for you, it's great. HP duels for 50, I remember those days. I remember the days where, uh, yeah, I had near play sets of all of my dual lands and then I sold them off to pay for a bunch of other things and then shortly after that is when all the spiking started happening and I got sad. Not terribly sad because I still have enough of my cards to play Legacy with but yeah. Uh, Mox Diamonds are another one I got out of like a year too early. <laughs> uh, where are we at? Life and Limb. So here's the thing. Life and Limb is a combo-rific card that can do a lot of things. I am still scared of life and limb because that is the sort of card where you play it and you think you're good and you have a million creatures now and then somebody board wipes and you are very sad because they also just uh what is it, obliterated you something like that just got rid of half of your lands all at once so life and limb scares me too much to put into my deck i i have no qualms admitting that absolutely uh, oh good lord, Sapperling Burst. Fading 7. Remove a fade counter from Sapperling Burst. Put a green Sapperling creature token into play. It has this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of fade counters on Sapperling Burst. Uh, when it leaves play, destroy all tokens put into play with Sapperling Burst. They can't be regenerated. That seems like a lot of hoops to jump through. Uh, we are going to try to be playing a, a little bit of a proliferate just because of all those spore counters we have around but i don't think it's going to be enough of a theme in this deck to make sapperling burst really worth it uh primal vigor as of the all of these like token doubling cards and counter doubling cards are good i uh, that's another one of those things where i feel like you can go overboard on it and it can also make games unfun and make your deck Again, if you're playing for keeps and very competitive, go ahead and throw cards like Primal Vigor in. I am wary of throwing them in if I'm trying to play with a pod that has fun. I should also point out, my natural inclination as a deck builder is to just build like blue-white Hanna Prison Lockout every time and just play eggs in Commander as much as I can. So trying to build decks that everybody at the table can have fun with is an exercise in stretching creatively. <laughs> Uh, magic growing up uh, in, as a magic player again in legacy competitive tournaments and whatnot very much hammers into you that magic is a zero sum fun game there is a certain amount of fun that anybody can have in one game and you want to have all of it on your side of the table so I grew up really liking my prison -y style decks where I was the only one who got to play magic after a while and most of the time my wins came from my opponent's spirits breaking and them scooping. But that's not what Commander is necessarily about. So I try not to build that way for Commander Kingdom because we want our guests to want to come back and still like Card Kingdom. So yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna not do that here. So that is why I'm 
hesitant to throw cards like Primal Vigor, Vigor and cards that just allow your deck to become Pub Stomper E style decks. You know, I'm a little hesitant to throw them in there because that activates the side of my brain that I do not want to indulge when I am building these decks. Uh, I once had uh, two fellow co-workers at Card Kingdom when I worked in the retail side and the event side who kept bugging me to play, to build a commander deck so I could play with them because this one was very heavy, just like legacy competitive stuff in my deck building. So I built Blue White Hannah Prison and I played it against a Rakdos... Uh, player like actual actual Rakdos and he refused to ever play magic with me again and that accomplished the goal I was going after but I felt bad <laughs> so yeah we're, we're, I try not to do that too much anymore uh where are we at attrition ooh attrition attrition's good attrition might be my main that might be the one spot I indulge that part of my brain I was just talking about because Oh boy, is that some of the best removal I'm going to have in this deck. Uh, we're also older and don't have time for your prison shenanigans. <laughs> Listen, I know how I'm spending my time when I sit down at a magic table just because you weren't planning on the game taking that long. <laughs> That's why you have turn zero discussions about, hey, what do we all expect out of this game? Uh, fungal Bloom, put a spore counter on a target fungus. That is very specific. I like it. I don't know if I want to put it in this deck. Uh, I, I like giving my opponents the released valve of you can see the clock coming. Like, you, you have to do something before upkeeps come around and deal with my board because that adds fun tension to the game. Cards like Fungal Plots kind of do away with that tension and just let you steamroll if you get it going super well. So... Yeah, like, obviously Fungal Plots on its own isn't going to do a ton. I can just make a bunch of Sapperlings, but that's kind of the point, isn't it? Uh, Path of Discovery, no. And then we're back into Utility Lands and whatnot and lands. All right, so with our building theme, we got 24 more cards to add into the deck. Let's do that real quick and see where we end up. All right. Save that, update a bunch of screens. We're getting closer. All right, we end up. We are at 93 cards total. We're at $326, as you can see if I scroll down there a little bit. So yeah, $326. Uh, what is it? 93 cards total. Our curve is actually looking pretty not bad here. I don't know if you can see that over here. Yeah, that got a little funky. Hold on, let's see if I can resize this window. Just enough for you all to see it. Next part we're going to be working on is our utility and miscellaneous cards. Visual view, can I change you up so people can see off to the side? Have to mess with one of the filters I have to do that. Let's go at 180. Let's try 150 that we're cutting out. Even less. Sorry, just trying to adjust this stuff on the fly so y'all can see what is going on fully as much as I can. There we go, let's try that. Close. Reframe you a little bit there. That's a little better. Uh, so yeah, as you can see up above here, if you're looking on the visual view part in the top right of that window, uh, our curve actually isn't bad for all of this, like all the stuff we're throwing in. I do like paying attention to my curve in Commander because while Commander is a format where you can get a bunch of mana out and do big things, I find it more useful to be doing like three small things a turn rather than one huge thing because if people have an answer for your one huge thing, you're kind of done. Whereas if you can do three small things or two medium-ish things, that's usually a little harder for people to be able to answer everything you're doing. So keeping your curve somewhat low is still good. And uh, for the part that it's cutting off there, you can see up through the five mana cards we have. We have four six mana cards and then two cards that are seven plus mana. So we do have a couple of things to sink our mana into, but I like keeping it kind of in this middle ground range 
especially being like your two, three, fours being a lot of your cards, just because I think that lets you play more magic. Just taking a look at the full deck there. Liliana hanging out by herself for now. Yeah, we're not doing bad. All right. Meanwhile, what are we at? We're just at our utility and miscellaneous cards. Let's take a look at this deck list and figure out what it is we actually still need or want to add in. So, uh, creatures, we're only at 19 creatures, but a bunch of our creatures and our other cards are pumping out a ton of sapperling tokens. So I'm not too worried about like the creature count being low or anything. We're going to have plenty of board presence that way. We are a little weak to flyers as green black decks can tend to be. Uh, we do have enough removal, I think, where we're okay with that. Let's figure out what our removal actually is. Uh, we do have the Death Spore Thalid. Just very good at that. Sacrifice the Sapperling, target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. So Death Spore Thalid lets us shoot a lot of things out of the sky if we need to. Uh, what did you do again? Sacrifice, oh, you were draw a card one. Spore Web Weaver, I'm still not entirely sold on. Might end up cutting that if we need the room. But yeah, we're not doing bad there. Both of our Planeswalkers let us take out creatures for removal and whatnot, so that's fine. Uh, spells, Spark Harvest is our get out of jail free card when it comes to Planeswalkers. Assassin's Trophy's in there for now. Golgari Charm does some work. Toxic Deluge, Death Sprout are all good. Hagger Mauling is fine. Status and Statue is also pretty good. Like, these are just some of the, what I call, boring glue cards. <laughs> They're the cards that let you actually play Magic and get to the more fun stuff in your deck. You need ways to interact with other people before things get too out of control. Casualties of War is one of the best cards ever for that in Commander. And boy, howdy... Is this one of my favorite cards to cast when you're playing 1v1 magic? That standard was fun <laughs> for me, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, good lord. Uh, artifacts were good. We can maybe throw in something more for utility artifacts. We'll take a look at those in a second, actually. Yeah, we're not doing bad. All of our enchantments I am pretty good with. Oh, we have fungal plots in there twice. We can get rid of that. Why do we have two fungal plots? Get rid of one of you. Save that. Refresh. Should only be one fungal plots now. We are now more commander legal. Uh, down to 92 cards. Nice. Guard germination's great. Yeah, all, all of the enchantments I am perfectly happy and content with. Let us take a look at some more utility stuff. First, utility artifacts. Is there anything here we want that we aren't already doing. Uh, reveal the top card of your library. If it's creature, we put a sapperling. If it's land, put it onto the battlefield. If it's non-creature on land, we gain two life. That's fine. It, it's it's not enough on its own for me to want to throw it into the deck. Uh, the bracers, whenever an ability of equip creature, if it isn't a man ability, copy it. That does a lot for us with our various uh, Thalids that do other things, but it's a little clunky. Swift of Boots, Lightning Greaves are always good. I don't know that this deck actually cares about them. What else we got? Grafted Exoskeleton. Huh. Meh. Yeah, I don't I don't know why we would care about that. That that that's going for an infect kill again, and I infect kills are funny in the right circumstances. I don't think this is that circumstance. Both the Citadel is essentially card draw for us. Uh, it's also a way like sacrifice 10 non-land permanents. That's where that card would shine here because we can just do that a bunch with all of our sapperlings. So that's a maybe. Yeah, I like that. That gives us a lot of explosiveness. It does It is triple black. Maybe. Uh, Heartstone is 
funny. I would have to look at our creatures again to figure out what we would actually need that for. That's a maybe. Altar of Dementia is a win con we could throw into this deck. I think we want either Ashnod's Altar or Altar of Dementia. I don't think we want both. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is going to be a mill deck. What are you? Ooh, Eldrazi Monument. This actually would be a deck for Eldrazi Monument, wouldn't it? Uh, that almost feels too mean, though. Make all of our sapperlings have flying and indestructible. Yeah, I don't, like, that might be one of those cards that's just too, uh, too good for what I'm trying to build right now. <laughs> Whenever a crypt creature deals damage to a creature, tap that creature. As long as that T remains in play, that creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Whenever a equipped creature deals damage to a player, that player loses one life. That is a weird card. Wow, that's a really weird card. Okay. So, if your creature gets through, the player that's hitting takes one more damage. Anything that ever blocks a creature equipped with this just stays tapped. That's bizarre. Uh, Contagion Clasp, I know for a fact I definitely want in. Phyrexian Altar is... Good. We already have Ashnod's Altar. Um, we have more uses for Ashnod's Altar with some of the X spells we have. Not a ton, but a little bit. And Phyrexian Altar is also 55 bucks, so I think I'm going to skip it. Contagion Clasp I like a lot, though. So yeah, Contagion Clasp. I'm going to pencil in Bolus' Citadel, but that might also be a card that just makes the deck kind of ridiculous. I can definitely see that being a thing. So, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. Uh, let's just go back from the top and see where we end up. We're just looking for utility stuff now. Miscellaneous cards that will fit into the deck and fill us out a bit. Uh, build Binding the Old Gods, I do like a lot. It is my favorite artwork from that entire set. If you don't know... Uh, Binding the Old Gods artwork is not a painting or a drawing or a photo. It, it's a photograph of an actual wood carving that the artist did, which is nuts and good and crazy. And I like it a lot. And it's great. But is it a card we want in this deck right now? Story target non artifact permanent or non land permanent and opponent controls. Great. A little bit of ramp with the forest. Creatures we control gain death touch until the end of the turn. Like, it's good. I don't know how ridiculously crazy it is for us. What was the last card I just added on here? Oh, that's right. It was the Contagion Clasp and Bolus' Citadel. I'm just going to clear out my clipboard real quick before I forget and try to add a bunch of cards again. Do, 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 do. Cool. So yeah, Binding the Old Gods, I'm not sure. Maybe? Maybe. High synergy cards that we didn't already throw into the deck. What do we got? Uh, Fungal Rebirth we already have in there, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Tender Shoot was already in there. Necrogenesis I already threw in. Did I? Looks like the target. Did I throw in Necrogenesis? Is that already in there? Enchantment, Necrogenesis, yes. Cool. All of these cards that I wanted were already in there. Jade Mage we could throw in just as a mana sink for pumping out sapperlings. I think we already have at least one more of those. And I don't know. You just seem kind of bad. <laughs> so what else, what else do we want, chat? We have room for at least six more cards that I haven't already figured out. I'd cut Jade Mane myself. Yeah, I, I didn't add it to the deck yet. What else goes in here that isn't some of the stuff we've been trying to avoid? Could do life and limb style stuff. I could throw in another board wipe. We only have Toxic Deluge right now. I might do that. 
I ran it, it was underwhelming. Good to know. Yeah, it seems underwhelming. It seems like another one of those cards like plain old Thalid. Like, yeah, it fits into the deck and it does stuff. It doesn't seem super fantastic. It seems like the exact word you said, underwhelming. What else do we want? Oh, we can, We I do need some cards that are destroy target artifact or enchantment. That is something I definitely need. So we're gonna throw a few of those in here at some point. And unfortunately, Caustic Caterpillar is one I like a lot. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit rule number one, so we can't quite do it. Worms. Uh, Putrefy could be fine. We do have Golgari Charm already, so we have one Enchantment Killer. We have Assassin's Trophy. Did I throw an Abrupt Decay? I don't think I threw an Abrupt Decay. I don't know about Abrupt Decay. Abrupt Decay might be a thing. Crows and Grip, I will definitely throw in a deck like this. There's almost always room for that. Uh, Malachi Rebirth, did I throw you in there yet? Whenever this creature dies, return it. I'm not entirely sure we want it. Do you have Elvish Farmer in the list? What do you do, Elvish Farmer? Elvish Farmer. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a spore counter on Elvish Farmer. Interesting. Very interesting. I do not. I might throw that in there. I have a couple of other cards that do the gain two life thing for sacrificing a creature, but another one might not hurt. So Elvish Farmer is definitely an option. Extinction events. Choose Otter or even exile each creature with converted mana cost of the chosen value. Interesting. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, do I want like a return to nature style thing? Rap and Vigor could also be funny, but I th think I would rather do like heroic intervention. We'll throw in the casual heroic intervention. Ah, no, don't actually click on the card broken wings oh broken wings is the new or one that does the artifact enchantment or flying creature right yeah broken wings is pretty good it's okay so we'll do broken wings maybe elvish farmer uh what else do we got Tainted Strikes, no. Tainted Strikes, too silly. In the wrong way. Do we want any kind of tutors? I don't think we really need a ton of tutors in this deck. Our deck is very redundant. Uh, Force of Vigor, I could throw in. Hagger Mauling was the do modal double face card we already threw in there. What was the name of the modal double face card that is the mana dork on the other side? It's a green land and it flips into a mana dork and I can never remember the name of it. It's not a good mana dork. I don't even know why I'm asking because it is it is just awful and I'm probably not throwing it in the stack. So never mind. Tangled Florahedron. Thank you very much for answering my question, but I talked myself out of the card as I was trying to remember the name of it. We're good on lands. We have plenty of ways of ramping and getting rocks and things out. So, yeah. Yeah. So, four cards. Five cards if we count the uh, Broken Wings. Let's find one more. Uh, what's the card I'm thinking of? It's not No Mercy. What did No Mercy even do? Whenever a creature deals damage to you, destroy it. That's fun, but it's not the best. Uh, what am I thinking of? Oh, you know what would be funny with a ton of sapperlings? I don't think this goes in the deck, but that's... F oh, it's only colorless creatures you control. Dang it. I was thinking it was all your creatures gained that, which would have just been hilarious 
to have just 20 sapperlings gang up on an Eldrazi or something. Just beat it to death. Boo earns. Uh, Gruesome Fate could be my finisher, I suppose. That seems kind of cheesy, I guess. Fecundity is in the deck, Data Storm. We already threw that one in there for sure. It's like that Pokemon Go art where 20 Pidgey are beating down a Tyranitar. Yes, exactly. Yeah, like, I know it's kind of hard to see individual cards on here. I'm not holding it against anybody if they're just jumping in especially and don't see every card that's in the deck. Feel free to ask if cards are in the deck or not already. Uh, so Deluge we already have. Do I want, like, a Damnation or Decree of Fate? Decree of Fate actually might be a... Th or Decree of Pain. Because we're able to get up to that high of a mana and then just have a million cards. Seems not bad. Yeah, I could go for a Decree of Pain. Why not? Decree of Pain. So if we add these... Let's actually add these in. Plus broken wings. Save that. Uh, what is wrong? There's only 98 cards in the deck when I do that. Why are there only 98 cards in the deck? Weird. Oh, I just, I guess I had more things. Uh, in Garrick's Wake, we could do that. One second while I update all of the screens that I have going on here. All right, that's a little... There is our deck. I don't want to... Uh, Vraska Golgari Queen, did I, did I not throw her in there already? I thought she was in here. There's Liliana. Oh yeah, Vraskal Golgari Queen. Yes, we already have her in there. Yeah, no, Vraskal Golgari Queen, I think, is probably my main win con, other than just being able to go wide enough that I can kill people out. Midnight Reaper, it's fun to kill yourself drawing all your cards. Shadius? Uh, I agree. BME Mike? Do not feel bad. Again, it, I know it's hard to see individual cards in the mess that is trying to pick out individual things from all of this. Uh, Shadius. Shadius? Shadius. Yes, the you would make it Shadius. Let me know if I'm wrong. Shadius, uh, Midnight Reaper, that style of card, is good. I might actually have considered throwing in the deck, but it does not fit rule number one over here. Uh, creatures and tokens that we have must be either fungi or sapperlings or fungi and sapperling related cards. Do, do, do. Sorry, just checking a couple of things here. Uh, what, what, I have two more spots still. Let's take a look. Uh, what was in Garrick's Wake? Card in Garrick's Wake. Destroy all creatures you control, you don't control, and all planeswalkers you don't control. That's real mean, isn't it? <laughs> that doesn't mean it's bad, it just means, man, that's real mean, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. See, I like to. I kind of like Decree of Pain better in that kind of spot because it is exactly mean. Darkspire Dragon, the next time I see you in person, whenever that is, I am going to remember that you made that pun. That's all I'm going to say right now. Um. Hmm. Knight's Whisper, those sort of cards. All right, I think we are reaching the end of what EDH Rec can do for me for these last couple of cards. So we're going to call this the next segment, which is just the final hundred. This is where we're either paring things down or getting up to those last couple of slots here. I think in Garrick's Wake is a far less mean Cyclonic Rift. Uh, I think they're somewhat equal. <laughs> At Cyclonic Rift, your opponents can potentially build back from, especially if you're throwing out a In Desperation Cyclonic Rift. Um, 
both of those cards can just kind of end the game, though. Which isn't bad. Somebody needs to win a commander game. I don't think having cards that can just win the game is necessarily a bad thing. I should point out. <laughs> yeah, so where are we at? We have two more slots. Two more slots. We're at 98 cards total. Necropotence. Wow. Do I want to go that way? Who? Oh, boy. Um. Oh, there's a thing we can do. So... Tutors, I'm usually not the hugest fan of necessarily outside of like ramp, which kind of counts as tutors, I guess, if you want it to be. Um, this kind of deck where it's mostly redundant and there's not necessarily one huge haymaker that I'm building to, I don't mind having a tutor or two in there. Diabolic Intent is kind of the exact right sort of tutor for this deck, where as an additional cost to sacrifice a creature, uh, or additional cost cast at sacrifice a creature and then you tutor something up. It is 26 bucks, which is a lot, but not the worst. We have some amount of room. We can throw in a tutor. Sure. One tutor. Uh, what is the stream on the 31st? So, uh, every month, what card kingdom just said in the chat? Uh, every month we run Commander Kingdom is what we call it. We have various people on, different guests, big people in the magic, magic community. Last month was uh, Mana Curves, Ben Wheeler, and Tomer from MTG Goldfish, Budget Commander. Uh, and we just play a game. We have fun. It's just bringing more people together who might not normally play together and have them. Ben Ulmer. I said Wheeler, didn't I? Wheeler was on a different episode that we did. Uh, but yeah, it's just bringing people together who might not always play together. Because you can certainly find a lot of webcam commander going on nowadays. We just kind of like bringing different parts of our little community together to play it. Uh, destroy each non-land permanent with that. No, no. What was the other? They had suggested one different planeswalker. Cursed Huntsman. What do you do? Uh, you know what? That might be a thing. Maybe? I don't know about Garrett Cursed Huntsman. What's, what's another... What's something else dumb I can throw into this deck, chat? I need one more card. What was the one already? Diabolic Intent? I'm gonna throw that in there. Yeah, I feel good about where the deck is as far as, like, I have removal, I have answers for various different kinds of permanence, I have a game plan, I have all my creatures, I have ways to win. Cosmic Elixir. What do you do, Cosmic Elixir? Oops. Oh, I could do with some reanimate. I'm definitely down. Oh, the Cosmos Elixir. That one's fine. Uh, ooh, hold on. There's there's some card I'm thinking of now that I just saw. Speaking of Budget Commander, Budget Commander puts out on Twitter every day a like hidden gem for budget EDH cards, and he had one at least the other day. That would work very well as a kind of value reanimate thing that is reusable. I just got to find it real quick in his Twitter feed. Where is it? Underrated budget commander card. There we go. Uh, the season of growth is good and actually wouldn't be bad for this. Uh, it's not Search for Glory. It's not Holistic Wisdom. Is it Holistic Wisdom? Uh, it's kind of Holistic Wisdom, but not really. Uh, Soldavi Adnate? No. I might... There. Oh, that's what I'm thinking of. Do I want, like... Uh, like Crucible of Worlds or something that lets me play some of my lands out of my deck. 
that's another card I could use. I could use just like one land that blows up somebody else's land. So do I want land recursion for some of like my fetches and things like that and my cycling lands? And then do I want wasteland essentially? Like it could be ghost quarter, I guess. And what do I cut for those things? It's because I think I think I've talked myself into wanting those effects. So uh, we add in Crucible, just because the other effects I know that do that. I'm not sure I want Life from the Loam. Life from the Loam is very good. Uh, but I am scared in this deck I'm going to be drawing a ton of cards and doing a lot of going through my deck kind of fast, so I don't want to deck myself. So we go Crucible of Worlds. Add that in. We're going to Ghost Quarter or Wasteland Chat. Which one should it be? So I do want some way of stuff, things. Oh, look at that. I accidentally. That's what I did. As I switched scenes, I hadn't uh, adjusted the visual view everywhere yet. There we go. This is supposed to be budget. It's not necessarily supposed to be budget. It's just we're aiming for $500 as our upper limit. We're at 374 right now, so I have plenty of room. Like, Wasteland is perfectly acceptable. Crucible of Worlds is perfectly acceptable. If I throw Crucible in, that puts us up to 416, according to this. Like, the Ghost Quarter Wasteland argument is more, do I want to be able to hit basics? If somebody is throwing some kind of enchantment on a basic land, do I want to be doing that? Do I want to be nicer about things? Because Ghost Quarter, even if I'm blowing up their lands, they do get a basic back out of it, which is just that kind of weird, slight little political thing. Uh, hmm. And then what do I cut for those things? I do want some amount of basics of my own. Right now I have four swamps, four forests... Uh, if I look at the thing I'm trying to look at that I can't remember right now, I'm much more heavily green, so I could cut a swamp. Yeah. Hmm. So we're at 100 right now with Crucible in. I guess I cut a swamp. I put in, we'll just call it ghost quarter for now. We do have room for strip mine. Strip mine. How much is strip mine? Do I still own a strip mine? I think I own a strip mine. <laughs> for now, I'm going to pencil it in as ghost quarter. I am reserving the right to make that into a strip mine before we actually run Wasteland, the playtest card. <sighs> so we go down to Swamp, we add in Ghost Quarter, Crucible of Worlds, that puts us where? That's not bad, I think. So yeah, we end up we end up at 417.73. We have our 100 cards. It is a deck that does a bunch of things. Tectonic Edge, I'm never the biggest fan of. Like, if I'm going to do that and I have the budget room for it, I'm just going to run Wasteland. Or even, I could run Field of Ruin even at some point if I really wanted to. Yeah, I don't know why. Tech Edge is just never a card that really did it for me. <laughs> for some weird reason. So we're at 100. We have a deck... Is there any other changes we want to make? We have a bunch of silly things to do with all of our sapperlings. We don't have any of the blood artist effects, so that's good. <laughs> just because I do still think that's easy mode. Uh, we do have, just looking at our mana costs, we have one triple black spell, we have one triple green spell, we have a bunch of double green spells. Uh, Death Sprouts, double black. Casualties Wars, double blacks. 
Decree of Pain is double black. We do have things like Crypt Lithrite in there, which will help us with that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about like our land splits and everything. We have 35 lands, a bunch of rocks. Yeah. 35 lands might actually be a little worrisome. <laughs> might want to go up one or two there. Just in general. Like I said, 38's normally where I start. I think we have enough rocks and other things to do that I'm not overly worried about it. We do have 36 lands. We have one uh, modal card. The, uh, what was it? Hagger Mauling. Hagger Mauling, I think, is my most used... Uh, is my most used of those modal double-faced lands from Zendikar Rising. What are my card draw cards? I had a bunch. I have Spore Crown? No, not Spore Crown. Uh, Psychotrope Thalid does it. At least one of the other Thalids did it where you can sacrifice Thalids to draw a card. Not my cloth, not Savage, not Spore Mound. I thought I had another one that did it. Oh, I think it was on an enchantment somewhere. Uh, other card draw stuff I have was... There's not actually a ton in, like, instants and sorceries, I don't think. It was hard season. Uh, search your library for X land, so yeah, I, I'm doing okay. There. Uh, the card draw cards. Skull Clamp is definitely going to be one of the big ones. Skull Clamp, I think, counts. <laughs> uh, we also have Vampiric Rites. Uh, fungal Plots is not... Uh, fungal Plots. What was it? Fecundity? Yeah, Fecundity. Golgari Germination. Wait, no, that's just... That's just... Do that sort of stuff. There it goes. Uh, Death Reap Ritual. And Moldervine Reclamation. So yeah, I don't have a ton of, like, cast a card, cast a spell draw a card, but I have a ton of things that just sit on the battlefield and over time are going to draw me cards. So I feel good about that. I think... I think we're good. I think this is a deck. I think we've got there. So I'm going to rearrange these screens a little bit. This is going to be... A little weird as I do this, so I apologize. I'm just going to try to make these things. We're gonna go to this screen. Oh dear. <laughs> Can you tell this is the first one of these we're throwing? I'm going to be rearranging all of my windows really quick so we can try to get a better look at all of these cards. And changing up my filters. Uh, you, I don't think I can actually get much better, sadly. Yeah. Fortunately, the visual view for this one isn't the best, but we'll do what we can. Let's get rid of some of the filter there. It's a little better. 125. Slightly better more. Too much. A little too much. Isn't this stuff fascinating, folks? Alright, there we go. That's a little better. So, there is the visual view of the deck slightly bigger. Let's see if I can fix that card list view. From the bottom, we go to like 100. Ah, that's not bad. That's pretty spot on for that. Yeah, we're not going to be able to fit it all in at once, unfortunately. We can get a little closer. Ooh. Let's go like there. Yeah, I think that's about as close as I'm going to be able to get to that. So, there is the deck overall. Not bad. We end up at 417.73 as of the prices today at Card Kingdom, I believe, is what it is counting. So, yeah, not bad. 
for 1773, we have our 100 card Slimefoot deck that all of the creatures are either funguses or sapperlings or fungus or sapperling related. There are no blood artist effects, which I'm specifically calling the part where when a, a creature of yours dies, all your opponents lose a life or a target opponent loses a life. Uh, we do have cards where, where when one of our creatures dies, we gain life. That part I'm fine with. It was just the shoot everybody down by sacrificing stuff that I wanted to avoid because I think that gets a little too quick, easy, competitive, whichever word you want to use. We are under our $500 limit. So yeah, we did it, chat. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. This has been the first of our Crowdsource Commanders. Next month, look out near the middle of the month on our Twitter feed in the week leading up to this stream, which will happen two weeks before that month's Commander Kingdom. Uh, we're probably going to try to do some Twitter polls or some other thing where you guys actually get to vote on what my commander is going to be for that month. And then on this stream, I'll build that commander. I will come up with the rules that I like. Feel free to suggest rules in those t uh, on the Twitter poll that we're going to throw up if we end up doing it as a Twitter poll. It might be a Google form. I don't know. We're still figuring that technical part out. But yeah, uh, we do want this to be... Oh, but slivers? So... Uh, Practical talk. Next month, uh, Strixhaven's going to be coming out. We're going to be in the build up to Strixhaven coming out. Next month is probably going to be a Strixhaven legend that we're going to be trying to build off of us. Uh, yeah, Maiko, we do want our guests to come back. Maybe one time we'll do, hey, everybody, build as much of a CEDH deck as you can, and then we'll do something like that. But until then, I'm trying to play a little nice. Uh, as for now, uh, if I don't know if we've announced it on Twitter quite yet, but you're going to hear it now because we're, today is our announce day for who our guests are for the next Commander Kingdom, which is in two weeks on the 31st at 2 p.m. on this same Twitch channel. We are going to have returning Olivia Gobert Hicks is going to come back, which is always fun. We have Sam from Ristic Studies coming back, which is also always fun. And we also have Gavin Verhey, Wizards Extraordinaire, coming to play on the stream. Uh, the Time Lord himself. So if you want to see Olivia, Gavin, and Sam all playing, uh, tune in here. They will be playing against this Slimefoot, the Stowaway deck. I don't know what all they're going to be on yet. Hopefully they don't just watch this stream or watch, <laughs> look at my deck list and just build a deck to try and stomp me into the ground. If they do, I hope they at least do it in a fun way. But yeah, thanks for hanging out, everybody. One last bit. Uh, one... So for this version of the stream, this first initial one, we did a, uh, instead of doing a Twitter poll, we just did an internal poll for our employees where they could vote on which one of the legends from Time Spiral Remastered I built. They ended up settling on Slimefoot. But one of our employees, Brian Hughes, who is one of our uh, people who does our token drawings in addition to his other uh, duties for us. Real quick, I'm going to go to this screen so you all can see this. Uh, he drew up an entire D&D &D party for us, if I can get these arranged correctly, of Sapperling tokens here. So we have our rogue and our wizard. Oh dear, there we go. You can kind of see it there. He drew this in pencil, so it's not quite showing up the best. Ah, come on, camera, I believe in you. There we go. <coughs> so yes, there's our rogue and our wizard. And then we have our cleric and our fighter. Woof. There we go. So that is from Brian Hughes, Brian Storm, one of our custom token artists. They do form a full-on panorama, if I can get them <laughs> arranged correctly, which might be tricky with the way <laughs> my hands work on here. I don't know if you're going to be able to quite see it right on the camera, but they do actually all line up into one big panorama. I think I have to have them that way, though. Anyway, <clears throat> we aren't planning on printing these. Um... But these are the sort of custom tokens that you can request any time you make an order from Card Kingdom. In the notes field, just please let us know what you would like for a token. And our artists will do their best to accommodate that. We cannot accommodate every token request we get. Just because 
we get a lot of orders, and all of our token artists also have other actual jobs they do for us than just the token drawing, so... <coughs> ah, been a lot of talking today. So, yeah, we try to get to as many token requests as we can. We might not get to every single one, so if we don't get one in one order, just keep asking on subsequent orders, and hopefully we'll get them to you. But yeah, I have been Chris. This has been Crowdsource Commander. All of your commander deeds you can find uh, at cardkingdom.com. I know real jobs. There is quite a bit of random chance on if a token will be done, as our requests far outnumber our ability to do them. This is true. Especially... <coughs> Sorry. Drop one of the tokens. Uh, with some of our uh, practices we put in place for the pandemic and whatnot, uh, our staffing is a little strange right now, so the token requests, we are doing our best, but it is very hit or miss. So yes, put in those requests. Go to cardkingdom.com for all your commander needs. Tune in in two weeks to Commander Kingdom. And I'm going to leave you on this lovely little outro screen that will let you know all of the details for that. Thank you for joining me again. And have a good day, everybody.